Today we're at Team Lab Planets in Tokyo, a really fun and immersive experience with music, projections and rooms where you walk through water. First I'll show you how to get there and how to get tickets, then there'll be a walk through the rooms and finally my tips and more practical information at the end. If you don't want any spoilers I'll tell you when you can skip the walk through. I know some people like to know what to expect and some people prefer a surprise, although I should say the experience of being there when it's all around you is so much more than watching it on a tiny screen. As always if you have any questions put them in the comments and if you need help planning your trip to Japan I have a guidebook with 300 pages of tips for booking everything and ideas for things to do. You can get it from cakeswithfaces.co.uk, the link's in the description and there is worldwide shipping to any country. We just got our tickets for Team Lab Planets, you can either buy them online or buy them on the door which is a little bit risky but we've been keeping an eye on the availability online and it's said they still have them for this afternoon. It's unlikely you'd be able to buy them and then go straight in because they seem to be booking up from the morning onwards. So we've got our tickets for a bit later, we're going to go do something else and then come back. The ticket machine is very easy to use and you can change the language to English. Here are the prices, it's 3,200 yen for a standard adult ticket and you can pay by card. This was on a weekday at the end of February. If you're going at a busier time of year, I would recommend buying your tickets online in advance. You can check availability really easily on their website, which is all in English. Team Lab Planets is right by Shin Toyosu Station, which is on the Yurikomome line. We actually walked here from Tsukiji Market, which is where we were this morning. It was quite a pleasant walk going over some bridges and we didn't see anything in particular along the way. It was just a nice walk. When I say I didn't see anything in particular, how could I have forgotten this giant cat water bottle? There's a few places right by the ticket machines in there where you can secure larger luggage and push chairs and things, so don't worry if you're bringing that along with you. It's a few hours later, we're back at Team Lab Planets. You can queue up just before your time slot and there's an area you can sit and wait out here. Helps if it's a nice day like today. You're allowed to take your own photos and videos inside Team Lab Planets. I'm just going to take the mic off my camera so it's less obtrusive and so it's not a problem. So if the sound's bad, that's why. Also, sorry if some of this doesn't come out very well on video. Some of the rooms are quite dark, which is really atmospheric when you're there, but it's not so great for filming. Just a note, there are some spoilers coming up of surprises that are in Team Round Planet. So if you're going and you want it to be a surprise, you don't know what's gonna happen, skip to the end. There's some chapters in the description so you can hear my tips and some practical things, but not have any spoilers. Immediately when you go in, you have to take off your shoes and socks because you'll be walking walking through water. I forgot to film them, but there are lockers to keep your stuff safe. And then it's straight in. Well, here's the water area. We're gonna walk up this waterfall. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this. I hope it is warm. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> you don't normally walk up a hill in water. I don't know why this felt like such a strange experience. It really transfers you into the world of Team Lab Planets straight away. I was just gonna say I forgot to bring a towel, but they give them to you. On to the next room, which is very dark. The floor's squidgy. <laughs> It's like, I don't think it's bean bags, beans, it's soft bean bag beans. <laughs> this is so funny. Everyone is scrambling, trying to get across the squidgy floor. You can just about see some people crawling along. And everyone was just laughing with delight. <laughs> The corridors between the rooms are also very dark, with spotlights guiding the way. It's very dark in here. Luckily they've got soft carpet and the walls are soft as well. I should warn you, there are some flashy lights coming up, so skip this section if that's not for you. Favourite room from Team Lab 
and borderless and it's just the same here too. So pretty. <laughs> This is made of just a load of LEDs and it's so pretty. It's just the same as at Team Lab Borderless and I was more than happy to experience it again. I could spend ages in here watching all the colours and patterns. It's mesmerising. You start seeing sort of patterns as you go around. I filmed way more of this than anyone probably wants to see because it's just so pretty. Wow, it feels really open and this gives you such a sense of movement. It's so weird. We're going into the water again. They said, roll up your trousers, so I think this one's a bit deeper. Ah, oh, it's warm. <laughs> I'm glad the water's warm. <laughs> oh, it's pretty. I really can't tell how big this is. There are mirrors, so it looks like it goes on forever. Uh, so the water's kind of cloudy, so they can project onto the surface. Oh, koi! Oh, fishes. <laughs> fishes. You can feel things on the bottom. Fish. <laughs> the floor's lined with a kind of rubber mat, so it's not slippery at all. The projections are created in real time, so it's not pre-recorded, it's not a loop or anything like that. So they interact with how everyone moves around the room. I really enjoyed this room. It's so beautiful, relaxing, and just a fun experience with the water. Next are these giant bubbles, which are quite similar to the room at Team Lab Borderless. And then this giant flower dome with mesmerizing projections of flowers and petals. Lots of people were sitting down or lying on the floor to take it all in. It feels huge in here and there's a really weird sense of movement because everything's going round. I think it's because of the mirrors on the floor. Everything's moving. We didn't spend too long in here because it can give you a bit of motion sickness. It feels quite disorientating when it all starts moving. That didn't seem to affect everyone because lots of people were enjoying it. Then it's outside for the garden section with these mirrored organic sculptures. When it's dark, they all light up. It said you can push them. There's a larger version of this outside in a forest in Tokorozawa, which is just under an hour from central Tokyo on the train. It's called Team Lab Acorn Forest. And finally, the other room you see in all the pictures, the floating flower garden. I was surprised that all of these are real orchids. They can grow without soil by absorbing moisture from the air. Everyone was really going for it with the Instagram photos in this one. The staff are wearing fuzzy slippers to clean the mirrors on the floor. You really do feel surrounded by the flowers when you're in here. Now some tips and practical details for you. If you don't want spoilers, I'd recommend listening to the rest of the video like a podcast. Team Lab Planets is a temporary exhibition, not to be confused with Team Lab Borderless, which is currently relocating to a new location in central Tokyo in Toranamon Azabudai. 
It'll be opening later in 2023. They haven't announced a date yet, so I expect it will be late 2023. There's a video about it on my channel from when I went before it closed. Now back to Team Lab Planets. That was really fun, I really enjoyed it. Sorry if you couldn't see much, it was quite dark in a lot of sections there. It's split into two areas, there's the water section and then the garden section. You're supposed to go in the water section first and that one is a lot bigger than the garden section and I think I like the water one the best. It was kind of strange walking through the water at first, like the first thing when you go in is the waterfall that you have to walk up and I kind of felt like oh I'm not ready for this straight away but it, it got you right in there and it's just such a different experience that you don't normally have and it was strange walking uphill through water as well because that's an unusual thing. It said on the wall that the point of it is that um, we're used to just feeling um, solid hard surfaces especially on the floor but in the natural world that's not how it is so this gives you a different experience. At the moment Team Lab Planets is open until the end of 2023 which is really great they've extended it so more people can go. There are one or two rooms that are the same as Team Lab Borderless. If you've already been to Team Lab Borderless I'd definitely recommend coming to this one as well because there is enough that's different that you can still enjoy it and if you're watching this at the point when this is closed definitely go to Team Lab Borderless because that one is amazing amazing as well. This one is quite a bit smaller than Team Lab Borderless but you do get the water elements which are really different. When it comes to accessibility they say there is an accessible route where you can bypass I'm guessing the water rooms and rooms where the floor isn't normal solid floor. There are some that would be quite difficult to get through if you do have mobility issues. We spent about an hour and 15 minutes going around this. You could spend longer in some of the rooms. That Some of them are quite mesmerising so you could spend ages staring at them and taking loads of pictures. And at Team Lab Borderless it is a bit like a maze. You sort of wander around and go into the different rooms. Whereas this one has a set route. So you go from one room through a corridor and then to the next one. So you don't miss out on anything. I know when I went to Team Lab Borderless there were a few rooms that we didn't find because it is quite a maze. I was really pleased they had my favourite room from Team Lab Borderless which is the, the infinite crystal world because it's just so pretty and magical. And I also really like the water rooms which I wasn't expecting. It was just something really different to experience and I like the one with projections on the water with all the fishes going around. If you didn't know you do have to be barefoot in this right at the start they tell you to take your shoes off and then your socks and they give you a locker to put all your stuff in and at some point the water comes up to your knees so if you've got long trousers on you need to roll them up so make sure you're prepared for that and if you're someone who doesn't like feet or doesn't like having your feet out this probably isn't the place for you because you have to be barefoot through the entire thing but the floor is nice and soft and it is quite warm. I'm not sure what the case is for children because the water comes up to knee, knee depth on adults so if you're shorter I guess it would come up a lot further on children. They might have to carry them maybe. I didn't really see what children were doing. And it's probably best not to wear a skirt because there are quite a few rooms with mirrors on the floor so there is a chance people will be able to see up and lots of people are taking pictures and things. I did wear a skirt, I sort of clutch the edges um, but it's probably best to wear something else really. There are shorts you can borrow if you want to get changed if you prefer and also at one point when you go outside they give you slippers to put on to protect your feet when you're going outside and they are shared so just be aware of that. One other thing and towels are provided so you can dry your feet. I did think about that just when we arrived here I thought oh should I have brought a towel with me but they give you them it's fine. So now it's back on the Yurikomome line back to central Tokyo. I always enjoy this train ride because you go across Tokyo Bay on the Rainbow Bridge but this time it was extra special. As the sun was setting we were treated to a view of Mount Fuji in the distance. It's very rare that I've seen it from Tokyo so I was so happy to get this view and that was just the day after we had that stunning view from the plane. Very lucky. 
I hope you enjoyed seeing Team Lab Planets. Subscribe if you want to catch the rest of my travel videos. Coming up, we've got Tsukiji Fish Market, Small Worlds Tokyo, and a useful video showing you how to reserve Shinkansen seats at the ticket machine. I'll see you then. Bye bye.